I'm going to present you the work in progress, and for the first time in Europe, that uh, we present this uh, ongoing research about fusion between city and 3D echo. In fact, there is no doubt that uh, we have excellent information with echocardiography. I mean, world motion, LV mechanics, all these things are, are really important by assessing our patients. And also we have seen that CT scan is really providing us great information, great anatomical information, and uh, new research also provides uh, functional information. I do believe that if we get the combined information from the morphology and the function, we will get much more information for our patients. We will get much more information from the disease. So this is really CBI fusion. CBI fusion is the merge of the results of various cardiovascular imaging modalities into a single hybrid display. And this is what we did in the last year. And I want to thank here not only the colleagues in Madrid, but also the engineers from Toshiba in uh, Japan that work closely with that and uh, help in the development of such a uh, new technique. So as I said, why we need that? Well, in fact, coronary artery disease, for example, is a functional disease, but we need the combination of both information. There are other diseases, heart failure and CRT, for example. We need the information from the location of the veins and also the delay in the segment contraction. So there are many diseases that we need combination or a more complete picture that cannot be provided by one single technique. So in fact, as I said, 3D echo is a complete view of the, uh, of the function of the heart. We assess LV mechanics in a really complete view. And CT, as you have seen today, now we have low dose radiation protocols that really offer accurate views of the coronary anatomy. Well, how are we going to do that or how we did that? Well, the first step is no doubt is merging what we obtained with the coronary CT and the ultrasound. Just to say that you can do that with the different vendors. I mean, it's just making fusion of imaging. So what happens if we merge the information from a patient that we are doing a CT and later or before a 3D echo, or a echocardiography? Well, how we did that, what is the step workflow? First, we load the individual DICOM data sets of the CT and the ultrasound. The second step is to um, set the image display and overlay the information provided by both techniques. And it's quite relevant to match the axis on the CT and the ultrasound. So let, let me show you in a step-by-step -step approach how we do that. Well, here you can see the CT image and in an automatic way, a line that detects the apex and the mid portion of the mitral annulus can be depicted. Also, now we can select with a manually uh, rotating point, we can select, this is the, the red point depicts the automatic line that covers the mid portion of the ventricle, and the blue line detects one point that we can easily see in our patient in both in the CT or in the echo. Usually, we have used the uh, portion of the septum in the, with the right ventricle and the left ventricle because this point is easily seen in both CT scan and echocardiography. So we can set, therefore, the rotation angle to any recognizable uh, marker. Well, now we move to the ultrasound images, and again, you set the, the uh, longitudinal axis coming from the mid uh, annulus to the apex, and then we manually rotate and select again the, the point or the segment that we previously decided in the CT scan that was easily seen in both techniques. So here in this example, you can see that this is the automatic line, and you can see here the blue point in between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Maybe you are thinking that now how we match that? Well, and uh, here you can see that you can control and move 
from the city to the ultrasound. Sad to see that it's not moving that video, but I will explain them more in detail. So uh, here you will see the CT scan, and in an automatic way, it will run and superimpose the echo images. Therefore, all the, uh, you, you will check, and you can be sure that uh, both uh, points are at the same level, and you can validate the exam. What happens next is that in an automatic way, the, uh, you can also control some checkpoints like the aorta, but you can detect the information from the 3D echo and superimpose the, in an automatic way what happens with the different coronary arteries, and that will come going from the right coronary artery to the LAD to the different, uh, in the different territories. So you can see that, that uh, the hybrid view will be the one formed, but uh, uh, after matching points with the information of the left ventricle in the 3D echo, and the information coming from the coronary arteries in the, in the uh, CT scan. But once you see that, we can go and ask, well, we need more information here. And in fact, we have more information because we have in the echo all the information available related to the uh, LV function. So we can ask that. So we can see that now we have the left ventricle, the coronary arteries from the CT scan, and we can ask about what happens with the contractility. So we can obtain the information very fast and quite uh, um, accurate in which coronary territory we see, for example, wall motion abnormalities much more accurate than just saying that the uh, septum belongs to the um, uh, LAD, because now we see the LAD and we see the septum. Not only that, we can ask for all the information that we have in the LV mechanics. So we can see the 3D vectors, we can see the donut view, we can see the 3D uh, uh, mesh. So all the information that we obtain routinely in the, um, by assessing LV mechanics can be now displayed. And for sure, will be uh, uh, certain diseases that will benefit from this combination of information. So in fact, we can analyze in this um, uh, 3D view, but we can also use the polar map. So we can superimpose the coronary arteries, but why not the coronary veins, if you are thinking in heart failure and CRT, for example, and we can analyze the contractility, but why not the delay in contractility or different possibilities that I'm sure you are thinking about. So we can display in the polar map or in the 3D the strain, we can display the torsion, we can display the activation imaging, and all this information together can be superimposed with the coronary territories or with the coronary veins. So let me finish with a clinical case, for example, that we found quite useful. So this is a patient with a three vessel disease. And we knew that, and it's, uh, it was difficult even in the cath, but the echo, what provides the echo? Well, first, the wall motion uh, analysis at rest was quite normal. But during stress, we saw that mainly the abnormality in the contractility, so in rest was absolutely normal, the abnormality in the contractility was related exactly to the uh, um, LAD. So in fact, we decided and we saw that this territory was really, really related to the LAD and we act just in the LAD. So why we need that? First, let me insist that this is a cutting edge information, first time released, and uh, there is no doubt but we need further studies, and we need the cooperation from most of you. But we have excellent data from CT, no doubt. Low radiation, new research, excellent negative predictive value, no doubt. But we don't see with that, uh, we, we are missing information. I think that echo is great. We can analyze wall motion, but I'm sure that putting all together will be much more beneficial for our patients, and we will get answer to different difficult questions that we have in the clinical settings. So in conclusion, dear colleagues, I think that the message is we are quite advanced in the technology, so Fusion City and 3D Echo is feasible. 
it is feasible, it's not complicated, it really combines the morphological and functional information. I have no doubt that this may help in decision making in our patients, in many patients, and we need to clarify whom will benefit. But I said, as I said, think about coronary artery disease difficult patients, CRT, 20% of the patients are non-responders, and out of those, many are related because we don't have a vein where we place the lead, and we, this lead is not related to the activation or stress echo. I think that future, future research should come to place this technology in the proper diagnostic place. Thank you very much.